So, I tell you what, man, I, on this edition of BSN with Bubba, this is probably one of the most exciting interviews I've had so far uh, for, for a lot of different reasons. Because, um, uh, man, I just, there's nothing better than a Gary Sinemont. I tell you, it's uh, growing up, watching you race, and then getting to know you. Um, this is a cool interview for me. So, um, man, I tell you what, we're here at the Snowball Derby this weekend. I know you've had a lot of success here. Uh, I think you like coming here too, don't you? Oh, this is like my home away from home. Yeah, right here. so, I mean, uh, it's been good to you. Um, this is kind of the biggest stage of the year, I guess. Um, and you've won the Derby. What year was it? Uh, 92 and 2000. So twice. 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 You've won a lot of big races uh, in your career. I know um, uh, if I had to, um, if I had to pick a guy, if I could afford it, me and Brands talk about this a lot. And uh, <laughs> if I could afford, you'd be the guy that I had, you know, with uh, with me every weekend. And I, for one reason, is you're smart, you're knowledgeable, you've been around racing, experience. But also, what I admire about you is the the um, I guess the how you handle yourself. You're all you're never negative. You're always you always like to build build people up, and you're you're a positive person. And uh, I always I always respect that about you. Um, you know, when there's always been rough times at the racetrack, you've always whether you've been helping me or not, you kind of always talk to talk me up or talk me out of it. So I admire that about you. But um, you know, I know Brandon's brand talks about you a lot and we always talk about you so uh, i'm excited to do it we'll have some fun with it and see where it goes no, i'm so. excited to be here Bubba. so so gary was the crew chief remember we won that first speed fest <laughs> we, he was cool deal. he was and, and uh, um, all i remember is oh uh, what's his name uncle roy uncle, uncle roy, roy. God, zaxby's or whatever wasn't all it? i can remember is sitting in zaxby's and he hated that <laughs> <laughs> oh my Oh, Uncle he was great. Roy. Uncle, he is a mess. <laughs> Uncle Roy would probably be down here, won't he? Yeah, oh, he's he's probably fifty miles away. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's a mess. All I can remember is him talking about the chicken man and yes, chicken. <laughs> but see, Serious, I, there, there's too. one thing you guys are forgetting about. You brought up Speed Fest, and we won that one. We did. But you're not. You're not. Do you remember the Derby? We do. We I uh, actually have a good story about that. We uh, okay. We had right. a chance. Oh, we had yeah. a shot. We did. We and uh, you're one of the best of having four tires at the end of the pit, at the end of the race, <laughs> and we needed those four tires. But we had a shot at it. Yep. We were close. Yep. It was a lot of fun. That was uh, what 15? I think it was 15. I think that's what it was. Yeah, somewhere in there. That's here because yep. yeah. I think I got the Seneca cars in 16 there, and then 15 was that last year we was going in transition. Uh, I think that was actually a, a McCoy car, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah. I think when we were on Speed Fest too. So. Yep. Um, yep. What's so what's your story, Brian? You guys can't leave us hanging. We also well, so I so my favorite story was uh uh so Gary was the crew chief and we ended the race with tires left over. Yeah. And um and then the next year Philip was the crew chief. <laughs> and uh I told Philip, I said, you know, like last year we had the right strategy. I said it just didn't work out. Yeah. Oh, you can't end the race with tires, he says. Yeah. And then the race is over and there's tires left in the pits. I'm like, hey, Philip, what's that? He's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but this race is hard to win, man. Just uh, you can't be good enough to win. You got to be lucky. You got to be lucky. Absolutely. Those, I mean, you, Absolutely. You, you, you've been around here. I mean, you, you won at 92 and then what, 2000, you said? Yep. Uh, man, it's just, what's the secret? The secret to me is having fun. Yeah. Like, I, I come down here in 91 for the first time just to watch. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I believe, Bickle won that year. And I remember being at the bar every night with him and, and, and eating across the street at Mesquite Charlie's. And it was just a, a, a ball, a good time, you know, coming down here. And I thought, I need to come down here and try that. Yeah. And so this event, I mean, it's, it's it was like this back in the 90s. Because I think the first so, time I come was 2000 or something, 2005. Mm -hmm. Really? So you won the first time you came? I won the first time I came. No, really? Wow. Yeah. Man, that's a new one. That's impressive. That's, that is impressive. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I just that. put that together when you just yeah. said that. I didn't. I didn't catch. I didn't that. know that. Well, well, you know, like I always tell people, you know, when they go to a racetrack for the first time, go walk that racetrack. You know, get to yeah. know it. And I still remember rolling in here about midnight, walking around the racetrack, you know, and thinking, "Yep, yep, I think we can, we can do well here." Yeah. You know, never in my in my 
mind did I think, oh yeah, we'll go out and win the race this weekend. But I knew you were badass. But that's even that's that just <laughs> that just goes that puts top. Yeah. I didn't know that. I yeah. didn't know that either. That's I just cool. put that together. Yeah. And like, man, I tell you what, you talking about walking around the racetrack. You know, I'm I'm weird when I go new places. I walk around the racetrack backwards. I like to walk around it yeah. backwards and then or ride on it backwards. <laughs> gonna be headshots <laughs> so we'll be neck up <laughs> hell yeah so the, so i always walk around the racetrack backwards which is weird but i always walk around the lap backwards and then i, I walk uh then i go the right way and it's almost if you walk around the racetrack backwards have you ever done that before no but I, I i understand why you do that i can tell things about the racetrack that you don't see yeah like the the characteristics of the racetrack, I can just it, it it's more defined. Like it's it's weird, you know. I never really walked around Pensacola backwards. I may do that here. Right? Might, might, might need, need to do, do that, that this weekend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's gonna be a race here this week. Well, maybe <laughs> we we hope. But yeah, it's uh, it's crazy that um, you walk around a racetrack and you tell uh, you know all about the place. Yep. You know, and, and figuring out what line you need, where there's grip or holes, there's things like that. It's just unique, you know. Yep. But man, I I, I didn't know that. So you come back every year after that. I, I came down in '92 and '93, mm-hmm. and then I took like three or four years off. You know, yeah. it, it was it cost a lot of money to come down here and do yeah. it. And uh, that that first year, it, this, this was probably a pretty good story in itself. Terry and Wassel Spears was the uh, was the uh, the promoters at that time, mm-hmm. and they come to me at, at Nashville. We'd won the All American in '90, and '91 uh, they come to me. No, oh, I guess it was '92. They come to me and said, "What's it going to take for you to come to Pensacola?" And I said, "Well, I, I you know you lose a lot of tires, you know, so mm-hmm. you know probably a couple sets of tires. Yeah, you know need pit passes because we've got to bring ten guys." Need you know probably four hotel rooms and uh, an entry fee and that that'll get me down here. Mm-hmm. Old Terry Spears looked at me and said, "You're on the entry list. You're coming." <laughs> you know, and, and that's all. So back then, so did you? Was this straight rail cars then? It was straight rail. It was cars. all premium yep. cars because I know the all pro deal. So this this never was. So this race, the Derby, was never really affiliated with the all pro type cars, right? Well, actually, it wasn't. You know, it, it, never a perimeter mm-hmm. chassis car. But that that year we won. A, it had some NASCAR affiliation with it yeah. because Skull was was behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Fritz Augustine and you mm-hmm. know all the NASCAR inspectors were part of the deal. Mm-hmm. You know, to what degree I, I I really can't remember. Yeah. So so was that uh so when you were you racing ASA at the time? So so all this I'm reason I'm asking I don't mean mm-hmm. to feel dumb asking all that stuff because that was that was hell i was only 10 years old i don't even know if i was 10 i was five years old when I, so i'm learning still learning a lot about it but i know i'm asking some questions but i mean that's so was you racing asa then yeah i started asa in 1986 that was my first year in asa so you raced with the great all the bob senecas oh yeah mike eddies and yeah. butch miller and everybody yep so you come down here and and uh took a few years off and um leading back into the 2000 uh, the year you went in 2000 what was what was going everything going right still well you can back up just a little bit because you, you go back to 99 and that to me that was the biggest year of the snowball derby ever really you know, they had a hundred thousand dollar challenge you know and uh, they had three races throughout the year that yeah. each winner you know had a chance to win a hundred thousand dollar bonus if they could win a derby so those, those that's pretty interesting i didn't know that either yeah, they, yeah that's, that's a why long time ago for yeah. 100 grand. the, 100 the grand. snowflake originally was that super race it was that last qualifying race yeah and and i just happened to win that that last race and i thought i was going to get in a fight you know before i got out of here because scott carlson he come up off of two and i got into him a little bit yeah. and, and i thought there was going to be a little fight and there was a, a deputy dog here that, yeah. that kind of helped take care of me robbie ferris and yeah. it was you know uh the sheriff you know on guard on everything yeah. and and uh, he got me out of trouble and as it turned out daryl brown ended up getting into scott and they wrecked each other and they, they were the ones that were fighting huh. i was in victory lane getting the trophy there you go so uh there I mean, you go. so leading up to 2000 there 99 so 99 is the year of the hundred thousand 
the or the hundred thousand deal. So two thousand, you're ready to go. Do you know you you feel confident in in mm-hmm. your in your program? Oh yeah, you ready know. <clears throat> Let's back up to so, ninety. We got to go back to ninety nine yet because that was the biggest heartbreak ever in yeah. my racing career. Yeah. Because we showed up with a with a rocket ship. You know, this is before the ABC bodies. Yeah. Oh, downforce. And uh, yeah, we yeah. had we had. A or was it still home fenders. built? Yeah, still home built. Oh yeah. Body stuff in. Oh yeah. Fenders and stuff. And, and and you know, like on a long run, everybody else would get up in the 19s, and we'd level out about 1870. Yeah. I mean, we just had them. I felt like we had them smoked. Yeah. Qualified six, which was the best I ever qualified, and uh, and then 40 laps into the race, uh, it was a restart, and I got taken out mm. and into the wall right about as we sit right yeah. here this is about where i ended that that 99 uh, was race. it scott carlson uh no it wasn't scott <laughs> okay. carlson it was john, like john boy wilkinson one, so. was, the, was the restart guy that, okay. that kind of helped induce the wreck yeah he but, wouldn't uh, do that nah not john boy <laughs> not john boy <laughs> so 2000 there was that the jake's car uh no. nah 2000 that would have been uh I had a friend of mine up in Pennsylvania that mm-hmm. had he, Randy Burke, Burke Transfer, he owned a trucking company, and I built him a race car, and he never did race it. He said, you just hang on to that and you drive it. Yeah. So we took it around and did some racing, and you know that's that's the car that we won the, the 2000 Derby with. So like 99 is such a heartbreak, man. You have good race cars. It's, it's kind of how this race works sometimes. You you win you win at the most expect, unexpected times sometimes and the years you think you should have won you didn't win and and then they come unexpectedly um so you ran all you ran a derby all the way up till when when was your last race i think it was 2008 yeah. i think two seven somewhere right in there. i don't think me and you ever got to race together because in, in, when i first come down here in 2004 five six i never made the race i, I struggled um i did make it in 2005 i think um, yeah, I think we did race. We I raced a few races each other. Together. Yeah. together. So, um, but it's uh, it was a lot of fun always having you go with us. Uh, enjoyed that. But I had a great time racing with you, Bubba. What um, what do you over the years you've seen racing go through a lot of changes. You've seen it ups and downs, and I wouldn't say ups and downs, and like where it's at now, and how the money's played such an involvement in racing, and um because back then man you had to work on your stuff you had to oh yeah you had to you know come up with stuff and the rules have changed racing a lot ingenuity back then you could you could build your own bodies and do it you know just the trick stuff yep. and the stuff y'all seen like us young folks we'll never even get to be a part of that and, yep. and see some of the ingenuity and what all the young or the older guys were able to do and how smart they was back then and just didn't know it um so it, it's cool to to see how things evolved and and talk to talk to guys like you that's been around both sides of the things and they're seeing it now mm-hmm. and how it's changed so much and it has changed a lot oh yeah um but you've been able to keep up with it uh through the years and um you're kind of like the rest of us you don't know anything besides racing right that's it that's so it it's 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 um just over the years, what do you think? What do you see it? What do you see it going to in the next? Since it's changed so much, man, that's that's a tough question to answer. You know, I, you know, every year you think, you know, oh boy, this this is looking not so good, and you know, the, the, yeah, there's not going to be near as many cars here or there. You know, you, things are going to go backwards, and it seems like every year. That, that someone steps up, there'll be new drivers come along, new teams come along, yeah. and that's that's why I stay in it. You know, I I, I like to be optimistic, you know, mm-hmm. and, and and you know another thing I notice is I, I see I see all of our vendors, you know, like having you know record times when it comes to selling their products. And, yeah. You know, so I know that it, it's 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 still here. Yeah. It's still here, and and I I feel like that the, the key to all of it is the promoter you yeah. know the promoter is the one that's going to have to stand up and say boys you know we want this thing to be big and then not just say it they, they got to make it that way they got to yeah. do it yeah and uh so going so the the first derby which is news first year back first ever try at snowball derby you win it i mean you outrun some of the all-time greats some of the some of the guys that 
you see on Sunday or did see on Sunday uh, that are badass. I mean, that's 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 pretty neat to come down here and, and win your first race and race against some of those guys and, and show them show them what it's all about. Yeah, there there were a few NASCAR guys here. I I, I can't remember exactly who they were. I mean, Schrader was here. Uh, you know, all the ASA guys from up north was here. Butch Miller. Uh, so look, y'all had to have different cars because back then y'all were running the ASA. Now was ASA straight rails back then? At that time in '92 they were. Okay, so you could take your same car that you were running the ASA and, yep. and, and run it to derby. So yep. a lot of those guys did come down and race there. And, and, and we had had a we built a car to come down here for that race. It was a new Port City car. I worked up at Port City, you know, uh, the late '80s, mm-hmm. you know, to 1990, and uh, so we built a car to come down. And that year they had a they had a uh, a rule that if you ran a Ford, you got to run a 450 carburetor. Huh. So ASA that year, they were starting to get Ford involved in the series. So we had a couple of V6 engines being built. So we brought our Ford V6 engine down and we, you know, we thought that 450 carburetor would be pretty golden you know, yeah. for us with that Ford. Well, we get down here and they, they took our 450 carburetor <laughs> away from us because they said, oh no, that was for the V8s. You yeah. know, they weren't gonna let that slide. We had a little nine to one. So them little V6 motors was good for how long there? Cause they, I, I hear a lot of people talking about those V6s. They, they, they run pretty good there for how many years? Uh, they, they, you know, quite a few years yeah. until, until they went on and, and kind of, you know, went away from that trend. Mm-hmm. But to me, that was the best race engine they ever built was those V6s. Mm-hmm. I mean, just suitable horsepower, yeah. you know, the, the taking the weight off the front end of the car, you know, just made them drive, you yeah. know, really nice. And uh, so, you know, uh, we, we had that. We had a little advantage just because we had less horsepower than what they did because all all the V6s that were down here, they were all Ruggles, high compression, old Bush V6s. Mm-hmm. And they probably had us by 20, 30 horsepower. Yeah. But we qualified, I think, ninth or 13th, you know, for yeah. the race. And then at the end, we just happened to get a, a 50, 60 lap run. run. And, and I still remember. Do you have tires in the pits in? <laughs> no, I think we, we ran them all. <laughs> Did you? But I do remember this. We, we had a red flag with about 50 to go before we took the last green. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that remember me from this because uh, red flag, we stopped on the back stretch and there wasn't a wall back then. Yeah. And I had, I had to relieve myself. So <laughs> I walked up over to the back stretch, uh, uh, the, the pavement, and down, you know, a little bit. And I didn't That's think awesome. anybody could see me. You know, I come back <laughs> up. up you know, onto the racetrack and all the people in the infield just started hooting and hollering. You know, and I think That's right awesome. then, you if know. If you I, were to do that shit nowadays, <laughs> they go, oh, you go black flag in, <laughs> do all kind of stuff. Yeah, You'd go be to on the, the damn news. Go to the tail, right. right. That's right. But that's cool. I mean, it, it, you can't do stuff like that nowadays. That's but awesome. It, uh, and then in 2000 there, you, you want it. What do you, what, what, what's, tell us the story behind that. So is that in the Port City car again? Another Port City car. Because you stayed in Port City there for a long time. Yeah. The, and Harley was still the owner and everything, yep, right? Yep. Harley Bovey will tell you that me and Butch Miller were the two, you know, loyal guys yeah. to his yeah. company. Yeah. And, uh, you know. I guess what we was talking about earlier, just people being loyal and suiting to their driving style, you yep. know, what you liked in a race car. And yep. there's no bad race car. It's just kind of what you like. That's yep. what we was talking about, you know. So, so 2000. You know, we get down here, and I, I'm gonna be like Bubba Pollard. I'm gonna bring me a Gleason, you know. And I, I thought <laughs> everybody's doing it, so I might as well, yeah. you know, jump in on it. I, even though I know you hadn't, you hadn't raced in it yet, but yeah. there's a few of the guys that were be, having success yeah. had the Gleason. So I think I, I went out once or twice with it. and I couldn't stand it. So we, we changed rear ends. And little did I know, changing that rear end was was a big part of winning the oh, race. Oh yeah, because. I can see it. Cause I put the spool in it. No, it's not for what you think. Yeah. So we put the spool in it, and during the race, we we have, I, I mean, we had a terrible terrible day. Believe it or not. Yeah. We had twice we had flat tires on the green. Mm. So at one point, I think I was at least two laps down, if not three or four, and we made all the laps up. And I, and I'll tell you a little story. There's a lot of people that don't know this story, and I'm probably dumb for telling it. But <laughs> hey, we're on the Bubba podcast, yeah, that's so right. I gotta let it all out. <laughs> So back then, you, you pitted in the infield, yeah. and the, the, the cars that ran the night before, they didn't make them get out of the infield. They were just kind of like behind your pit stalls. Mm-hmm. 
So I had some friends of mine from Texas that had their car in our pit stall. He didn't get any extra stuff. So, so I walked up to him and I said, hey, I said, uh, we got a set of tires here just in case something happens the next day. And uh, you, would you mind if I put, put them up on your car and if we need them, you know, we'll come over and get them. And they said, oh, no, if you need them, we'll roll them over there to you, you know. Well, I'll be damned if we didn't need them that day. because we had. So was there not a tire limit back then? There was a tire there limit. Was. There was a tire limit. Yeah. And uh, we'd, we'd already used up our allotment. <laughs> So you had an extra set of tires. So I ended up with, I think it ended up being two extra tires. Yeah. And uh, that's not even the cool part. The, the cool part is, is when we took out that Gleason, yeah. Jody Ridley had broke a rear end. Yeah. So we gave Jody Ridley our rear, our spare rear end. Yeah. So wouldn't you know, at the end of the race, there's 20 to go and I'm chasing Eddie Mercer down. He's leading the race. Yeah. I'm second and Jody Ridley is up my ass, <laughs> you know, just, just digging. Yeah. And I went by Eddie and, and Jody never, never got off my bumper. Yeah. And I still say to this day, if, if, if we don't give Jody Ridley our rear end that, that weekend, yeah. he wins that snowball derby yeah. without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Huh. Hmm. That's crazy. Interesting. So, yeah. There was a few of the derbies won with the V6s, right? Oh, yeah. I think Musgrave won it, right? Yeah. With the V6 as well. Yep. Damn, we made it bring the V6 back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just a good driving oh, motor. Yeah, it was, you know, and it, but yet it was still good enough. It was enough horsepower where you got loose. Yeah. You know, he still would wear the tires out. And uh, adequate horsepower, that's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. And so nowadays, out of all those, you just got to have as much motor as you can get. Yep. So out of all those guys you raced against all those days or all these years, you, you talked about Jody and, and stuff. Who Who is one – who's who's a race car driver that – that you think was one of the best back then or you know the, or, or and also one of the guys that you really didn't care to race with well uh, you know you go back to that first derby win in 92 and uh, uh jeff purvis yeah. was was he was the man to beat you know yeah. when you come to these races and yeah. and uh, i never forget gary blue was spotting for jeff on that day and, you know, Jeff was coming on the radio saying, you know, am I going to get him? And Gary said, yeah, you're going to get him. He'll he, 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 he be coming back to you. <laughs> and then about tw 10 laps later, he come on the radio and said, well, where's he at? And he said, he's driving off into the sunset, Damn. Jeff. So that, that was one of the cool memories I have That's from cool. here at Pensacola. Because, yeah, I mean, Purse, we've had him on the show, and people don't realize he's, he was a badass. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. I, I, I had never seen anybody race a perfect race like he did. I, I, I wasn't in the event but we'd went to nashville for the all-american 400 yeah. one year he won it he won it i think uh 90 he won it uh 92 three something like that uh, I, I remember him taking, he won it back to back times. years it must have been yeah, 93 that i, I went there and watched and he he ran 400 laps perfect laps yeah. like I, I don't know if he led every lap or why i remember that being yeah. you know such he was spot on on that weekend yeah. and so, yeah, he was definitely, uh, you know, like I, I kind of look at guys my age and, and yeah. you know, he was he was one of the best that I raced against. And, yeah. you know, like some of the guys, the older guys that I'd raced with, you know, I, I watched growing up, you know, Mike Eddy and Bob Seneker and Trickle mm -hmm. and Butch Miller, you know, th those guys to me. They were the best. Yeah. They they were the best. Yeah. And they they and they they were the best because not only did they race well, but they taught us a lot, too. Yeah. So, so those guys like Seneca, when did you start racing? When did you start racing? I started racing in 1984. 84. So I was kind of a late bloomer. I think I was 21, 21. when I started. And, so you, uh, uh, so you, did you jump in just right racing with those guys? No, no, I started. So did, you, did you grow up around racing? Did oh, your yeah. family race? And yeah, I, I, you know, since I was a kid, you know, I, yeah, I was brought up at the racetrack. Yeah. You know, my dad uh you know he had a driver named don gregory mm -hmm. and you know i still remember 1970 i was eight years old and we went to we go to golden gate every year for the florida state championship and the governor's cup yeah. and we won that race in 1970. Huh. so you know like i started being parts of pretty big wins pretty early in my life yeah you know and i can't help but think that that kind of made my head think i'd like to do this yeah so them guys like Seneca and stuff, they had, had they been racing a long time? Oh yeah. Before you even. Oh yeah. Were you? They got a head start on you. Yeah. Pretty good head start. Yeah. 
That's amazing. So eight. So in in the mix of all that, uh, ASA had been around for a while, I guess. And what year you you started coming up race ASA? Your first year. Yeah, 1986 was my first year, and <laughs> like the thing I remember most about you know my first couple years at ASA was I, I learned the bottom of every racetrack. Yeah. You know because that's where the lap cars went, yeah. and and I got <laughs> I got every I got every one of those drivers. You know I earned their respect yeah. because you know I was always looking in my mirror. You know when they were coming, I was getting out of the way. Well, that leads to you talk about at least another topic of respect nowadays do you mm. you think you don't you don't see respect uh nowadays versus back then i mean you see the respect level being different and and uh just how people race us uh back then versus now oh it's it's there it's not even close to being the same as what it was back then and you know i not only did we we race hard and 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 you know we might get into one another you know during an event we always settled it right then and there you yeah. know like it, it usually wasn't fighting it was usually talking about it yeah there might have been some yelling and screaming if somebody didn't want to race because you got knocked out of the way but we had to go race with those guys you know next week or the week after yeah. you didn't have no social media to beat off of and that's that that was a big deal back <laughs> yeah. then didn't have that I mean, so. I mean, respect uh, nowadays. I, I I I try to race people how I want to be raced. Yep. And uh, and some. I mean, hell, we've all made bad decisions of of doing things, you know. And I'll I'll make one Sunday probably or or, or in the next couple of races, you know. But I try to race people how I want to be raced, and and that's what um, I think a lot of people don't. Uh, I think um, hey, they don't really care. And it goes to show you just not only on the racetrack but in the world in general yep uh people don't have respect for other people and yep. their equipment or or the people working on the race cars and things like that and, and it's just unfortunately what the world's come to uh, uh now but um going back to the to the asa i mean man you had you had a lot of i mean you won a lot of races uh the championship deal there uh winchester going into the last race what year was that that, that was, was in 2000. That, that was 2000. Yeah, but leading up to that, before 2000, you won some races. When do you start winning races? When do you feel like in your career, after you started racing there, uh, you felt like you was you was winning races, you was on top, that you could go and compete every week? You know, I, I won some big races, but I know I still didn't feel like I could go win anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, we won the All-American 400 in 1990. And that was the first big win. I mean, that's only what? When did you say you started racing? 86? 86 was my first year in ASA. I mean, hell, that's uh, in ASA. So, yeah, I mean, that's four years right there. You, yep. You, yep. You and and, and, and a, lot of, a lot of things happened in those four years. You know, when I when I moved up to Muskegon, Michigan, and went to work for Harley Bovey at mm -hmm. Port City, like that was a big move in my life. Yeah. And, and it, 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 I, it's easy to look at it and think, oh, yeah, it was the race cars. But more than that, it, it, it taught me about myself Yeah. because I, I figured out what made me happy, you know, and I, I, it was the first time I ever took care of myself without mm -hmm. mom and dad, you yeah. know. So that was the number one decision that I made that, that led me on to, you know, the career that I had was, well, was that move. We talked about this several times. We talk about it all the time on this show is surrounding yourself by good people. And yep. Harley was probably, yep. uh, I mean, 80s, 90s there, 2000s. Harley done a lot for the sport. Yes, he did. He built hell of a race cars yep. uh, back then and, and has done a lot in general. So, I mean, uh, it, it goes back to, like I said, just surround yourself by great people. Yep. Uh, Did you work at Port City? Didn't Garvey work there too? Yep. Did so y'all work worked together. Me and Mike worked together. So y'all raced against each other at the ASA deal at the same time you were working there? At, at that time, Mike was still racing more locally. Gotcha. You know, yeah, like so, at Berlin and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And I went racing with him a lot. You know, we mm -hmm. soaked some tires together and, <laughs> you know, we, we had a, you know, had a good time, not only at work, but then we'd go racing. Yeah. And, he helped me out, man. Mike Garvey, he was, he's a, he's a, he's a good man, you know. Mike is smart. Yeah, he's, he's very, very smart, smart when it comes to front end stuff and things like that. And he he taught me a lot. Um, what, you know, there for a couple of years, we didn't work uh, a lot together, but uh, he helped me a lot uh, early on in my career. That, that taught me a lot. He's he's smart. Oh, he made Harley Bovey a lot of money because he could hang a body and yeah. do an interior in about two days. Yeah, I mean, he was a working fool. And, uh, you know, Harley Mike didn't mind was, pushing him out either, did he? <laughs> yeah. 
He, uh, Harley, uh, um, he, Harley would be a great one to have on the show too. Oh yeah, yeah. cause he's, he, um, oh yeah. Harley got me hooked up with Johnny Clark. Yeah. I don't know, somewhere around maybe ten years ago or something. And yep, that's always been a. I've always had a really good relationship with Johnny. Yep. Over the years, I was always appreciative of that. Yeah. And that that that's something that Harley did was he did. You know, unite people together. He was a chess player. Yeah, and, and and you bring up Johnny, and I, I remember Johnny. You know, I even when I was there, you know, I got to know Johnny a little yep. bit. Always went up and talked to him. Yeah. You know, going back to that that first those first couple years down here, Mario Goslin. Oh, yeah. You know, he Mario come here the first year in '93, mm-hmm. and uh, and I still remember he was parked next to him and. And, and and Mario's like, what do you got in for springs? And I back in, I was the soft the softest guy. I was a pair of three fifties. Three fifties, yeah. Yeah, we was three fifties and one seventy fives. And yeah. most of the guys down here, they were still on a pair of four hundreds, two hundred, yeah. one fifty. Yeah. So I told I told Mario that you know that's what you needed to be. So he went that direction. Uh, he said, "Car's hitting the racetrack. Put rounds on it." You know, I'm sitting there helping him out. Yeah. Well, Mario qualified six, and I qualified seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, yeah. I thought, I, I think you I can't told him no more. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. catch yourself doing that. I still catch myself today doing that. And I'm yeah. like, "Oh, you better hush." Hey, hope you guys are enjoying the podcast. Part two for Gary Saint Amant is coming up next week. Thanks for watching. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe our YouTube channel. The attention you guys pay our channel is much appreciated and it also helps to help our channel grow. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe and definitely share on your social channels. Also, check out our other YouTube channel, Sport Action Films. It's where you can see a whole lot of other type of racing things as well as super late model videos, podcasts. Thanks for watching BSing with Bubba, the Gary St. Amant podcast. Episode 1 from Five Flags Speedway. See you guys next time on the BSing with Bubba podcast.